Introducing Ghost. I'm going to be using one of my uh, favorite imaging and backup tools today, Ghost. And you know, the very first thing you want to do, um, I guess it depends on the version, but I'm, I'm going to use a couple of different versions of Ghost <coughs> so you can see the differences. But most of the time when you want to do a complete image copy, you don't want to boot up off the hard drive. That's because certain files will be used and mounted on the drive that therefore cannot be copied. So you can't get like a true, complete, uh, perfect copy of a hard drive unless it's, you know, powered down and, and, and you're not, you, you can't be running an operating system off of a drive and have it booted and running and accessing the hard drive and make a, a you know, a, an exact perfect image copy. So you'll notice most of these image copy tools, um, you know, tools like Ghost and Clonezilla that we'll use, um, you know, sort of a, a Linux-based tool, and even some of the Microsoft tools we've used, like ImageX, um, usually require that the hard drive, you know, the operating system be shut down. And so you want you, you end up booting off of something else. So, you know, we'll boot off of uh, a CD in this case. And, you know, that's if you've got um, a bootable Ghost CD or Clonezilla or, or whatever you're using. Another favorite task I, I like to do is I uh, make ISOs of all my bootable CDs and I put them on uh, my flash drive. And if you go to like pendrivelinux.com and use their multi-boot boot tool, it's free. It's a great tool. Um, you can have as many of these ISOs as you can fit on your flash drive and you can boot up uh, off of all of them. So um, it's kind of cool because you know that way you can carry around, you know, I've got a 32 gigabyte flash drive. I've got like six different operating systems on it, um, three versions of Ghost, Clonezilla, a bunch of tools, all on one little flash drive that fits in your pocket. And generally, flash drives boot faster than than CDs, and <coughs> it's just pretty convenient. But it doesn't really matter either way. I'll I'll show you booting off of both. First, create a bootable flash drive or CD with one or more Ghost images or applications on it. Second, configure the BIOS and CMOS settings to boot off of the flash driver CD. Insert the flash driver CD and boot off of it, not the hard drive. But whatever you're using, you want to make sure that you know, you've configured your BIOS to boot off of it. So you know, you just go on your BIOS and look at your startup options and make sure you've configured the BIOS um, to either boot off the CD or, or boot off the flash drive, depending on what you're going to use to, you know, to boot Ghost. Booting and running Ghost from a flash drive. This time I'm going to uh, boot into Ghost from off of a flash drive. And I have a couple images I keep on a flash drive. Uh, Pen Drive Linux. It's a free tool you can download. Use the multi-boot tool and you can configure all kinds of things on it. So I'm going to select uh, booting USB off the BIOS. And this brings up my little 16 gig flash drive. And I just wanted to show you some of the things I've got on it. Um, I have Ubuntu 32-bit uh, and Ubuntu 64-bit and RAP Linux as a rescue image. Um, some antivirus tools. Uh, directly bootable ISOs, which is where I keep my ghost images. System tools. In this case, um, of crack. And I keep some rainbow tables and things. And Gparted and Clonezilla. Just, it's a wonderful free tool. And you can do so much with the flash drive. You, you can kind of turn your flash drives into networking and PC repair Swiss Army knives with this great free tool. But I guess the one I'm really interested in, um, I can do other operating systems and tools, but it's directly bootable ISOs. And if I go here, you can pretty much take any ISO and make it bootable with this tool. So notice for repairing and installing Windows 7, I've got a 32-bit and a 64-bit Windows 7 ISO. And I have a Ghost 11.5 ISO and a Ghost 15 ISO. And even though I have mm -hmm. Ghost 15, for some uses, my again, my personal preference is uh, Ghost 11.5. So we're going to boot up off of that. I'm going to select that and boot. Alright, and here's the welcome screen. And I can go to the menu. And, you know, same as booting up the CD, except that it's more convenient. I can carry it around in my pocket on a flash drive. And, uh, you know, it actually loads, a, you know, faster. Flash drives usually load a little bit faster than, than CD-ROMs. 
booting Ghost from a CD. So in this example, I'm going to use the, the CD-ROM drive. I've got a Ghost CD in. I'm going to hit select CD and from the BIOS, and then that'll load the image. And this is just an example of uh, Ghost 11.5. They added more bells and whistles in later versions of Ghost, but um, to me it just kind of bloated it and made it more, you know, I mean, I really, really, uh, really, really like this version because it handles just about anything you throw at it. It backs up and, and clones, um, you know, Linux and Microsoft and Apple products, you know, Leopard. Um, it does all kinds of partitioning formats. It's got a whole slew of tools. You can run it both the command line and from a menu. Um, and yet it's still very small and simple and concise. And the problem with the later versions is that yeah, they've added more bells and whistles, but it's also ballooned up and become this huge monstrosity that I just kind of like the simplicity of, of these older tools. So this is 11.5. And when you, when you boot up, there's an interface like this, and it depends on the version that you're using. Um, if you're doing forensic work, you can choose whether or not uh, you know, to, to sign a drive and you know therefore prove the authenticity of the drive if you were maybe you're cloning something to for under an investigation or something like that but I don't use it for anything like that I'll, the only thing I use it for is backing up data um, for clients and customers and myself and I, you know, I keep a lot of removable drives and images on those drives so to get started um, first thing I would do y you can either use the mouse which I'm using here or it's got a really good DOS interface and actually um, it works better sometimes if you just use the arrow keys. So I'm just using the arrow keys like up and down and left and right. Here are some Ghost standard menu options. On the main local menu, there's Drive, which offers Drive to Drive copying, Drive to Image copying or a backup, and an Image to Drive or Restore. Then there's the Partition submenu, which offers Partition to Partition copying, Partition to Image or backup, and Image to Partition Restore. And there's Check, which lets you verify images and drives. Other Ghost options available while imaging are Compression, which makes smaller files but uses more time to compress, and Fast, which uses less time but makes larger files without compression. Some common Ghost command line options are Split, which splits an image file into multiple chunks according to the size you specify, and A File, which redirects Ghost to log error messages to the location you specify instead of the default A colon, which is the target for a legacy floppy drive that most modern systems no longer have. You should perform some preliminary activities before imaging, such as before backing up Windows 7 and Vista partitions, you should disable System Restore. This saves space and prevents loop errors that can be caused if you back up with System Restore turned on. If defreeze is installed on the system being imaged, place it in a thawed state before making your backup. Delete any temporary or unneeded files to decrease the image size. And finally, defrag the hard drive. Um, basically, the, the most important thing that you, you, you want to take a look at when you're using this tool is this menu here. So do you have a disk that you want to copy, you know, back up or restore? Or do you have a partition you want to copy, back up and restore? Or do you simply want to verify and check an image copy or a disk? So if you, if you use this option, you can copy one disk to another. That's useful if you're upgrading your hard drive and you want to move from one to another. Um, but remember that this option destroys all the data on the drive. So it completely erases anything on the drive and replaces it with whatever is on the source. It makes two, effectively a clone. Two identical disks. Okay, And you might start to use some tools to make a partition active or something every now and then when you do that. But be aware of that that's what that option does. Now this option, a disk to an image, is different. That instead can save and compress an entire drive to an image file or series of image files if you use the split command. And this is um, and this is more useful for backing things up. You know, if you have, have like a large USB drive or something like a two terabyte drive, you can back up a lot of different machines, um, you know, to one hard drive that way and put each in its own directory and you know give it its own file name and things so two disk and, and two image um, and then of course that's if you're backing up and then if you're restoring it's going to be from image that would be restoring a disk from an image file from a backup that you made previously so that's good if you want to copy an entire disk you don't always want to do that a lot of times maybe you have a multi-boot and 
you have Linux and maybe Snow Leopard and you know or maybe you know Lion or whatever and, and maybe uh, you know Windows Windows 7 and maybe you just want to back up one partition or maybe you just want to restore one partition if you have like a multi-boot system I most of my systems are multi-boot because I'm always you know messing around with this operating system and that operating system so I usually choose this option and uh, you know you can back up again you can you know clone or copy one partition to another partition and effectively make a duplicate or you can back up a, an entire partition to an image file or a series of image files again if you use a split command and that, those would be the options to back up a partition and of course you can restore a partition if you select from image and that would restore uh, you know that partition from an image file all right so um, the first thing I'm, we'll do, look, why, don't, why don't we go through some of these options here. And we'll do disk to disk, which would be the first one. And then we'll look at disk to image, I guess. You know, they say a picture is with a thousand words. So maybe if I just do this um, and show you the results or show you what it looks like, it, you know, it'll be a lot better than me, blah, 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 blah. Um, putting you to sleep. In example one, we're cloning an entire drive to another drive of equal or greater size. Note, this is not an image file. Alright, so the first option, disk to disk. Let's try that one. Alright, notice the menu interface. Now you're going to need a source drive at least as large, excuse me, a destination drive, at least as large as the source drive that you're copying. So notice I can pick here one and two. I have two hard drives set up, and I can have a USB drive, you know, I, and there's all kinds of media you, 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 know, you can burn depending on the version of ghost you're using you can burn it to a DVD or CD whatever in this case I have two hard drives of equal size and they're relatively small drives 30 gigabytes so I have Windows 7 on this drive the first one and it's the source drive how do I know well let me select this with the interface and I'm, I'm just using yes you can use the mouse but I'm just using the DOS interface so you'd select this interface and I'm just gonna tab over okay and taking a look at this, um, select the destination drive. I right, said so that's a whole hard drive and all the partitions on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, select local, and then new size. And then for an, one entire drive to another drive, I'm going to say OK. So source and destination. Um, proceed with this clone. Destination will be overwritten. I'm going to say yes. And let it go. Now the only thing that you want to be careful with, um, you know, with this option is, you know, be careful about selecting the source and destination. Obviously you don't want to get them confused because if you copy the destination to the source, then effectively you'd be destroying the source. You know, if that's just not the data you're wanting to copy. So be careful. Um, I, I even recommend I will label my drives and label my partitions before I go to image one master and maybe one backup or something and that way you know it'll show up in ghost and you can tell what you're copying to what so to speak notice it'll you know give you the percent complete the speed uh, the megabytes copied the megabytes remaining to copy so you know less than 200 meg have been copied so far and I have about 5 gigabytes to go so far a minute has elapsed and the estimated time to complete the job about half an hour so this might be a great time for a coffee break if I want to go away and you know sip a cup of coffee and chat with some coworkers. Um, and notice it'll tell you the files that it's copying down here and once again this is probably one of my favorite imaging tools I mean I use clonezilla sometimes imagex but I you know ghost is just a great tool for image copying and in my humble ignorant opinion I think the older versions of Ghost are sometimes better than the newer ones they're less bloated and they seem more flexible sometimes and this is version 
Okay, and in this case, clone completed successfully. And we could either continue if we wanted to and clone like another partition or verify, you know, if we want to verify a disk or something, or we could just reboot the computer. In this case, I'll reboot into Windows 7 just to show you what a complete disk clone looks like. And you can see this is effectively a mirror image of the first drive. In this case, we cloned an entire drive, and so you look at the free space and the amount of space consumed. Notice the file structure here. This is the source drive, C, the one that we cloned. And here's the destination drive, the one that we cloned too. Okay, so they are identical and that was a drive to to drive clone in example two we're backing up a system by cloning an entire drive to compressed image files also note this time we're using the split option that was a uh, disk to disk and the next one I want to do is disk to image and if I do disk to image it's just going to make a you know a um, I can create a compressed image file of that entire drive and the default option under GUS 11.5 if I do this it'll do it as one large file and that's okay I guess if you're in TFS if you're using a, a per, you know a file system that supports large files but um, I like to use the split option with Ghost for two reasons you know you can use FAT32 it gives you more versatility about hard drives and things that you copy your image files to, and also, um, you know, generally the when you use smaller chunks in a file and you do a lot of copying back and forth from one drive to another, it seems like you're taking less uh, less of a risk of that file becoming corrupted. Very large files, when you start to copy them back and forth from drive to drive, you you tend to have problems sometimes. Um, and so for that reason, I'm going to uh, show you a command line option. Alright, so we're, we're still going to make an, a, we're gonna do an image file of a drive this time, but I'm going to do quit. I'm going to exit out of the ghost boot tool and just use, um, you know, a command console, command dir to list the directory contents. And I want to use ghost, but I want to use the split option. So I'm going to say dash split equals, and you can make whatever size chunks you want. A gigabyte would be 1,000. Alright, you know, kilobytes or 2 gigabyte size chunks. I usually do 2 gigabyte size chunks like that. Alright, so if I run Ghost like that, instead of saving it all into one massive file, it'll break it up into two gigabyte size chunks, which gives you more versatility and sometimes more resilience if you tend to copy image files back and forth between drives. Alright, so now I'm running Ghost with the split option. And I'm just going to go local disk and this time to image. And again, you want to be careful about picking your source and destination, but I know that this is my source. And then file name to copy image two. Notice you know the interface is a little different this time. I'm going to do Alt Tab or excuse me uh, Shift Tab to go up one, and then hit the down arrow key. You can use a mouse too, but I like using the DOS interface. The destination drive I want to copy to is here, and if I had a USB or a flash drive, that would appear and show up as well. So I'm going to select that drive to copy to, and then I'm going to tab back down and give it a name, and I'll just call it. Windows 7 or Win 7. Um, let me do. Let me not do that. Let me say um, Win 7 host. All right. And the only thing is, you want to keep it to like you know eight characters, depending on the version of Ghost you're using. A lot of it you know, uses a DOS name format, so if you use more than eight characters, it won't show up. Or you know. I mean, you can you can use more than eight characters, but it won't show up in the interface. The, you know, you won't see all the characters. The only other caveat is don't end it with a number. Like I almost did, you know, when I, like I wouldn't want to just call it Windows Seven, or don't call it you know Host One or something like that. And the reason is, um, depending on the version of Ghost you're using, I figured this out by trial and error. But if you end the file name with a number, um, it'll back up just fine. But then when you restore the file. 
uh, you'll get all kinds of problems like out of sequence errors. The reason is, is when you start the backup process, especially with the split option, um, Ghost will start adding increment numbers on, you know, sequence numbers, so one, two, three, four, five, to different chunks of the file that it's backing up. So if I ended it with a number like, say, host one or host two or something, um, even though it would back up just fine, when I went to restore, I might get, a, you know, different types of errors out of sequence errors because it would be confused in the restore process. It would, it, it would see host two, but there'd be a, a chunk, you know, a file chunk it was looking for called host two or host one or something. So just two caveats, you should really keep it to just eight characters and you should not end your file name uh, with a number. You can have a number in there, but don't end it with a number, right? So I could say win seven hosts, you know, that would be fine, but not win seven or not host win seven. I'm just gonna tab over and I'm gonna click save, hit enter. Notice it'll say, hey, you wanna compress the image file? If you don't compress it, of course, it's going to be a lot faster because you know it doesn't have to use CPU cycles and look for repeating zeros and run algorithms to to do compression. But I always choose you know high compression, cuts the file size in about half, even though it does take longer. Proceed with image file creation. I'm gonna say yes. Okay, and Ghost has started, and estimated time about 20, 20 minutes to do a compressed image uh, backup. Three, two, one. And image creation completed successfully. All right, so this time we've done a backup image of an entire drive. And let's go see what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look at our drives now. You can see 23.2 gigabytes of free space and 27.3 gigabytes free of 29.9. And if you look here, here's the file system, but this wasn't a clone this time. This was an image backup to image files. So if I look on the drive where I save the image files to, notice like there's a two gigabyte image and then there's another you know, 600 and some meg image there. All right, so these two were made. In example three, we're restoring a complete drive from a compressed image file. All right, now that we've made a complete uh, disk backup to an image file and seen what the image files look like, Let's do the opposite. Let's do a restore. So we, we backed up a system. Now we want to recover a system. Imagine we had catastrophic failure. So again, it's the disk menu. And this time, instead of to image, it'll be from image. And I want to select where I created my image files. I'm just doing shift tab and hitting the down arrow key. And in this case, here's my Windows image file right there. So I'm going to open it. And in this case, I'm select the destination drive by clicking on the drive number. And I'm going to go ahead and click on or hit enter. And then I'm going to say OK. And proceed with uh, disk restore. And I'm going to say yes. And restore from the image file. And notice it's got time remaining and, you know, It'll take a lot less time to restore a compressed image than it does to create it. Okay, so you know it, it's pretty nice. You can be at, you know back up and running in ten, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, restoring from a ghost image versus taking you a lot longer to try to reinstall everything and reconfigure everything if you had catastrophic failure. And two, one, and be about done. I 
go to MFT mail. Okay, here we go. And all set. Clone completed successfully. Okay, and so that was just an example of a restorer. And then in this case, everything went fine. There were no error messages, so we're good. Um, and again, a, a very effective backup tool. Okay, and um, I could either reboot by resetting computer or I could c continue with another operation if I wanted to. So we've looked at all these options, disk to disk, disk to image, and disk from image. Remember these two back up, and this option here restores. In example four, we're backing up a single partition to a compressed image file. Now what about partition? If I did partition to partition, um, partition to image, and partition from image. Let's take a look at that. And so if I were to um, notice, I got, you know, same as before, I have I can select a destination and a source. Um, in this case, my source first. Now, in this example, I'm not doing an entire drive. I'm just going to do a partition on a drive. So if I select this option, I only have one partition on this drive. But notice you can see the data. It's 6.8 gigabytes of data. Um, if I can move my mouse over here a little bit. 6.8 uh, gigabytes of data there. 30 gig drive. There's no label name, but that that's a nice, you know, you want to be careful about your source and destination. R remember, once again, you don't want to accidentally uh, choose, you know, mix up your source and destination. Otherwise, you'll end up destroying the very thing you're trying to back up. But you know, this can help you as a tool to get information on the partition and the drive. It'll give you the data size and the label, and you know, you'd be able to figure out what you're copying and where you want to copy it to. And those are the two things you should know before you commit to any image. Um, Otherwise, it could be a potentially destructive operation. Okay, so we'll that that's an example of a one partition drive, partition to partition. We'll do like a partition to image. Now let's go take a look at a multiple partition drive. Multiple partition drives. I've booted up another system, and this is a triple boot. It's got uh, it's a Hackintosh. It's got Snow Leopard on one partition, and uh, when, uh, Linux Ubuntu on Windows Seven. But I just wanted to show you. If you do disk to disk, it's just going to copy the whole disk and all the partitions. But what if you have a multi-boot system? Or so if I wanted to do partition to partition or partition to image, um, I just wanted to show you, you know, how I could select different partitions here. And so I select a source drive by clicking the drive number. I'm going to click on OK. When I do this, notice that it will show me all of the partitions on the drive. So here's, you know, there's an Apple file system right there, and that's where I've got Snow Leopard. There's my Hackintosh. And instead of GPT, this is MBR. Um, this is NTFS. This is my Windows 7. And this is uh, Linux Ubuntu, like uh, I think 11.4, which is uh, brain fart. I never Natty Narwhal. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I just wanted to show you that I could pick an individual partition as a source, and then back that up. Uh, you know, only back up that certain partition, and that can save time and and space. You know, I may not have changed my. Uh, you know, Snow Leopard partition. I might not have changed anything on on my uh, you know uh, Windows 7 partition. I may have only modified something on my Linux Ubuntu, and that's the only thing that I need to back up. Um, so in this case, I could just do a partition backup of that single partition, and I'd have the option on the restore of restoring it, you know, to uh, you know a partition of the same size or even a larger partition. All right. So just just to show you that. Yes, you know, you can do multiple partitions if you choose the second option, um, partition instead of drive. And you can be more selective. Instead of backing up an entire disk drive, just backing up a certain partition. Let's back up a single partition to a compressed image file. So once again, we've taken a look at all of the disk options, disk to disk, and disk to image, and disk from image. Now we're looking at partition to partition, partition to image, and partition from image. And a partition to partition is just like a disk to disk. It's just a clone from one partition to another. So let's look at creating an image file from a partition. So I'm going to go ahead and make an image here. I want to select my source. Once I select the physical drive, now I have to select the partition. See? So I select, first I select the physical drive, then I select the partition that is my source. So I just, I'm hitting enter and enter. I'm doing this the DOS way and tab. Now that I've selected the source physical drive and the source actual partition, I need to select the destination drive to copy my image file to. I'm going to do uh, shift tab, pull down here, and this is the drive that I want to copy it to. 
And I already have one image file, that's an image of a whole drive, and this will be an image of an entire, you know, just a partition. So I'm just going to put um, win 7 part. Remember, you just don't want to end it with a number. Okay, you don't want to get it out of sequence error. Alright, so I'm now I'm ready to save. Um, yeah, eight characters, looks good. And I want to use high compression. Proceed with image creation, yes. And this time we're just imaging a partition. And let's reboot and take a look at the file. Remember the first time we did an entire drive, but we used a two gigabyte split and this time we did just a partition and no 2 gigabyte split. Now we're booting off the uh, image that we restored from the last disk. Alright, so remember we, we backed up an entire disk to an image file. Then we restored the entire disk from the image file. And now I'm actually booting up off the image that I restored. So this isn't the original image, but this is the clone. Um, that I put back on the hard drive from the image copy, the first image copy that I made. But I just wanted to show you the difference, you know, the first time, again, we backed up a whole drive and we split it into two gigabyte chunks. This time we only backed up a partition. And we did not use the split option, so it'll do it in one file. Well, minus the initial ghost file. Um, usually I use the split option um, and the partition option, and I'll just back up the partitions I need. Alright, we booted up the, uh, <coughs> in this case this is the, the restored image. So we're booting up off of the cloned, or the restored image from our image file of the drive. And let's just go look at the difference between, um, you know, creating the image file of the whole drive with the split option versus creating image files of the partition without the split option. this case again notice 23.2 versus 24.7 gig let me hop on over here and um, you know whereas the whole drive in this case we had Windows 7 um, and you know, this was the split option so you'll see that th when we did the whole drive it starts out what we, what we told it to call it you know Win 7 host ghost first two gigabyte chunk and then Everything over two gigabytes, in this case, there's another like 600 or so meg, not quite a gigabyte, but see how it post fixes or adds, you know, a number onto it. So it'd be like 001, 002, 003. And this is with the split option. That's the whole drive. Both these I've highlighted. That was when I backed up the whole drive and imaged it with the split option and compression. So it compressed about six and a half gig down to about two and a half gig. Pretty, pretty good compression there. Alright, now this is an example of doing the partition, and this time I didn't use the split option. So notice, you know, that's 2 gig, a little bit over 2, and this is actually 2.7 gig. So it's over, but it was able to compress the entire partition into just one file. So 6 gigabytes to, you know, um, pretty much a little bit less than 3 gigabytes, so like less than half. Um, pretty, pretty good compression there. And there's only one file, and still it's under 4 gigs, so, you know, but I mean I could use a split option and it would have just made another fall like it did up here if I would have used split. So whether you use split, whether you don't use split, my preference is split. Some people like large falls. I've just found that it's you know it's nice to be able to copy things back and forth between NTFS and FAT32 if you don't have file sizes over 4 gig. And I've also found that your files are less likely to become corrupt as you copy them back and forth if they're not humongous you know 30, 40, 50, 60 gigabyte chunks of data and I'm only saying that because, you know, this is a small partition, a small drive without a lot on it, but imagine if you were to, you know, ghost and, and back up a really big system, like, you know, 100 or 200 gigs of data, then your even your compressed image would be like 100 gig or close to it, so that would be a huge file, um, 
and there's a lot of file systems that just can't handle that a lot of operating systems that just can't handle files that big as far as copying them back and forth so it's just it's kind of cool to have the split option and be able to pick back and or you know choose back and forth what you want again this is an entire hard drive and this is just a single partition on that hard drive we restored this and actually what we booted off of when, when we just booted we were booting off the restored image from the whole drive now let's see if we can restore the partition redirecting the log file I'm going to use uh, one more command line option here we've already used the split option and that's what I use almost all the time to split up you know or to make the file size uh, into manageable smaller chunks than just one huge file um, remember that's dash split equals and then however big you want to make your chunks of data we're going to look at one more option that's the a file option and so I want to go back to the command prompt and yes and in this case it's always going to be ghost and then whatever argument you want to supply so in this case a file and the a file option will let you change the default uh, location where ghost will write a log file and there's some old code in ghost and by default it always tries to save a log file to a which is like the floppy drive a and b would be considered floppy drives on the system and not that many people have floppy drives i don't have any on my system and you know or my systems my laptops my desktop anything odds are you probably don't on yours either so this could be a useful command line option and I can just specify a drive letter wherever I have a free, you know, C, D, E, whatever it might be. Um, in this case, the example I'll use is, is C. And then um, whatever you want to say, arrows.log or .text or whatever you want to call the file. But that'll let you specify the error log file and, and where to write it. And that way, if you do get errors and you need to kind of go through the log file and see what happened, um, you know you can get out of ghost you know trying to write it to the a drive where it, you know there is no a drive or to a drive where it can't write it to because it's in a formatting that ghost doesn't understand or doesn't have permission to write to that partition so that'll just let you change the the location and the name of the log file all right so i'm going to again run ghost <coughs> and this time we just want to restore the image that we backed up in this case, you know, it was just a partition, single partition. So I go local, partition, and of course, if I was backing up, I'd say, you know, two partition or two image, but I'm backing up, or, you know, I'm restoring from an image, so I'm going to say partition from image. And this time I want to select uh, my source, in this case, this drive here. And the partition here was this file, Windows 7 file. And once I select the source partition, you know, from the image file, I can verify that. And now I'll select the local destination. And again, that was the drive I was booting off of. So I'm going to select that drive and I'm going to select on OK. S and then once I select the physical drive destination, I can select the partition destination. It's always physical drive and partition. Physical drive, partition. Source destination, source destination. And our restore from image process has been completed successfully. So at this point, um, our disaster recovery and restore is now complete.